Sagan from Michigan State University, visiting the University of Pennsylvania, uh, who will speak about combinatorial interpretations of binomial coefficients analogs in yes. yeah. yes. uh, And as usual, we're going to take uh, the speaker, in this case, Professor Sagan, uh, out for dinner at the Evelyn Restaurant on Eastern Avenue uh, at 645. If you'd like to join us, you're most welcome. But please let me know immediately after the talk. Okay. First of all, I'd like to say to Dahaba, to Dahom uh, for inviting me to speak. It's always a pleasure to be here. In fact, I think it's been less than a year since the last time. <laughs> but I will be leaving the East Coast, so uh, this, it may be a while before I'm back. It's great to see you all here. So there are a few things I should say before I start the proper uh, part of the talk. First of all, this is all joint work with Carla Savage. And if you're interested in getting more details about what I'm going to talk about, surf over to my website. Which has the canonical address. And there you will find a preprint based on the talk, as well as slides for my 20 minute jiffy presentation of this, <laughs> uh, which is contained pretty much everything. So you don't need to take notes if you want to. You can just sit back and listen because notes have already been taken for you. Okay, so let me uh, tell you what we're going to be studying for the next 50 minutes, or 48 minutes, excuse me. So um, let's start off with a couple of variables. Call them S and T. And what we're, we're going to be looking at a sequence of polynomials in those variables. So we're going to define call them curly brackets n, and that's because those of you that are familiar with Q theory should think of these as related to square brackets n in the Q sense, which I'll make precise later, but for now that's just a remark for the people that already know. And then you do it in a very simple way. You start off the zeroth polynomial is zero, the first polynomial is one. And then for any further value, you get the nth polynomial by taking the n minus first polynomial multiplying by my variable s and adding to it t times the one just before. Okay, so that's going to give you some sequence of polynomials. Let's compute a few of those just to make sure that so we're on. Generalize Fibonacci. Yes. yes. Generalize the Fibonacci and a bunch of other things. So, but yeah, the only is ahead of the game, as usual. <laughs> so let's just worry about what this looks like for a few values. So what's 2? Well, 2 would be s times 1 plus t times 0. These are 1 and 0, so that would give me s. Uh, let's see, 3 would be, you can now do these in your head probably, it'd be s times this, which is s squared plus t times the 1, so that's s squared plus t. And then 4 would give me s times the previous, so s cubed an st, and then another st from t times the previous, and I think we can let the computer do the rest of them. Okay, everybody clear what this sequence of polynomials is? Now, as a historical note, if these two variables are actually integers, this is called a Lucas sequence. And that's because Evaris Lucas, French mathematician in the 1800s, studied this and the arithmetic properties of this sequence for various uh, S and T, especially primes. We're going to take a different viewpoint, though, here. Okay, so we're going to go one step further, and we're going to define, in honor of Lucas, something I'm going to call a leuconomial. So. <laughs> Sorry about, I don't know of a better way to, and it, it actually follows on something else which I'll talk about later. But, so, I'm going to find the leuconomial coefficient. You don't say leucasnomial? No, and I'll tell you why in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
aside from it being somewhat harder to pronounce yeah. because of the S and the N being tipped together. So the definition is, so this is going to be curly brackets N choose K. And I'm going to define it by taking curly brackets N factorial over curly brackets K factorial times N minus K factorial, whereas you might expect curly brackets N factorial just means take the product of the polynomials from one up to curly brackets N. So it's like five binomial, only with, uh, that, And that's why we leave out the S, because you don't say Fibonacci no you <laughs> say Fibonomial. <laughs> okay. So, um, so let's calculate one of these again, just to see what we get. So uh, what would curly brackets for choose two look like? Well, that you can obviously cancel factorials with curly brackets, just so you, as you can with normal factorials. So that's going to be curly brackets four times curly brackets three over curly brackets two times curly brackets one. And we have all of those on the board, right? Curly brackets four was s cubed plus two s t. Curly brackets three was s squared plus t. Curly brackets two was s. Curly brackets one is one. And if you feed that to your great computer and let it crank for about an hour, it will spit out, if you're lucky, s to the fourth plus 3s squared t plus 2t squared. Now you will notice this is a polynomial. In s and t. Now there is not just like if you define the binomial coefficients in, in by their factorial. There's no way to see directly from the definition that you get an integer out every time and not just by some fraction, well, there's nothing from this definition that doesn't say that, well, why couldn't this just be some rational function of s and t? It never is. It's always a polynomial. And in fact, it's always a polynomial with non-negative integer coefficients. And therefore, we would like to know, being combinatorialists, what these things count. So the purpose of the lecture today is to give a simple combinatorial interpretation for these guys, which of course then implies that they are in the set of polynomials of S and T with non-negative integer coefficients. Now before doing that, so that's, that's where we're headed. That'll be our end. That'll be the last theorem that I'll put on the board. Um, let me make a few historical notes. First is, we, uh, as Doron said, we, there's one special case that we all know and love, and that's this Fibonacci numbers. Right? And of course, you get that by taking S and T both equal to 1. Right? And then this is the Fibonacci recurrence. So then brackets N is a Fibonacci number. And brackets n choose k is called a fibonomial by those who do Fibonacci number stuff. So this is a well-known quantity that has been studied before. There are some other special cases, though, that you also know about. If I take s equal to 2 and t equal to minus 1, it's easy to compute directly from the recurrence relation that brackets n is always n itself. <laughs> and therefore, in that case, these guys are your ordinary binomial coefficients. So the, bino the fact that the binomial coefficients are integers is a special case of the theorem I'm going to show you. <coughs> and if you want to be even a little bit fancier, again, for those who know the world of Q, if you take s being 1 plus Q, T being minus Q, then these things reduce to what's the usual Q analog of N. And if you don't know what Q analogs are, you can forget about this line of the talk and still understand everything else. This is just for those people that are familiar with this. And in that case, these guys are your Gaussian polynomials or Q binomial coefficients. Okay, so all of these are special cases of what we're about to do. 
Second thing is I should mention that there's, I want to give some 